Hello YouTube, Lyricide17 here, but you can just call me Travis, and welcome back for another collection update. Uh, nothing to uh, talk about in the beginning here, so let's just uh, jump into the music. Um, in the background, we're listening to, uh, let me take it out here, this is Ancient Empire, The Tower. This is the new, the new, their new one that, that came out just at the end of last, end of last year. This is uh, heavy metal, kind of bordering on the power metal from the US, pretty good stuff, out on Stormspell Records. Yeah, good stuff. All right, let's start off with some uh, 2018 releases. Uh, this one just came out on Friday. Uh, this first one I'm gonna show is anyway, uh, and that is uh, the new one from Hooded Menace. This is Osarium Silhouettes Unhallowed. This is what their uh, uh, what fifth full-length album now. Uh, yeah, the last one that came out in 2015, Darkness Drips Forth. Uh, it was pretty good. Probably why it was my least favorite of their albums. Uh, but was still, you know, amongst the rest of the, their discography, which is all excellent. Uh, was still pretty good, but was my least favorite. And, uh, this one, uh, this one jumps back up the quality. But let's, uh, let's hold our horses for a bit. Uh, this is released out on, uh, Seasons of Mist. If you're not familiar with this band, they are a doom death band out of Finland. Um, I initially was introduced, introduced to this band as the, uh, the vocalist and guitarist for most of their albums, at least. Uh, Lassie or Lass Pico, Pico, I'm not sure how you say the guy's name. Just got some lyrics and some info and stuff at the end here on the liner notes. Pretty cool, a good album. Our, our, as, as traditionally is true, with Hooded Menace. Uh, but anyway, uh, he did the last Pico, that guy, Lassie Pico, whatever, however you say his name. He uh, did the vocals on the first Acid Witch album, which Chanic Hallucinations. I'm sure I've said this fact uh, 40 million times on this channel, but maybe you're new and you didn't know. Anyway, uh, so yeah, anyway, checked out. Uh, at that time, they'd only had one album out, uh, their first one, Fulfill the Curse, and uh, immediately was in love with this band. Uh, shortly after that, uh, Never Cross the Dead, their second album came out. Uh, that one, uh, well, Fulfill the Curse is excellent. That one just smashed it right out of the water. That album freaking rules. Uh, definitely my favorite of theirs. Uh, but all, all of their stuff's great. Uh, Effigies, Effigies of Evil that came out, came out after that, also another great album. And then they released another a compilation uh, Gloom Memorial, I believe, maybe that's what that one's called. Uh, that has uh, all of their splits and EPs and stuff that, that weren't wasn't released on full length, which at the time was awesome for me because most of that material was record and I was not buying records at the time. So that was cool. And then, like I said, 2015 came out with Darkness Drips Forth, which is pretty good, but like I said, my least favorite. And again, that brings us back to this one, Asarium Silhouettes and Hallowed. Yes. This is a killer Hooded Menace album. Uh, definitely already like it more than Darkness Strips Forth. I think it's right up there with the rest of their other albums. Just great, great stuff. Uh, I was, uh, I wouldn't say worried, but I was maybe a little apprehensive uh, as this is the first album that doesn't have Lassie. Uh, do, or, uh, I'm gonna go with Lassie, I don't care. Lassie on vocal. Uh, it's the first one that doesn't have him on vocals. He still uh, plays guitar in this album. And is is the chief songwriter, the sole songwriter of the band. But you know, so I was a little worried because the vocals are pretty incredible. And uh, I gotta say, well, I definitely can tell the difference between the two vocalists. Uh, the guy they got to replace him uh, sounds really great and uh, doesn't doesn't is isn't so far removed from Lassie's style that uh, it is distracting. It, it sounds great. Don't worry, it sounds awesome. Uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Hari Kuakanen, we'll go with that. Uh, anyway, yeah, actually, uh, it's a new vocalist, new bassist, uh, and new drummer. Although I think last he did play bass on this too. Yeah, he played bass on this album. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, he's the main songwriter, so the quality is still there. Uh, you know, awesome. You know, good tempo changes from the slow and the plotting with the awesome, uh, you know, moody leads over the top of it, you know, moving into quickie, chunky, catchy, 
doomy riffs that just like get your head head bobbing. Uh, you know, if you're like the you know the past material by Hooded Menace, check this out immediately because you will think it is pretty pretty great. You know, the the music just it gives a good uh, gives off that good atmosphere of uh, I don't know like being chased by some zombies that that uh, zombie knights, you know, knights of shining armor that uh they can't they can't see you but they can hear you so maybe maybe it's the feeling of being chased by that speaking of which uh i wish that they uh had go they had kept with uh yeah got down here yeah um i wish they had kept with their previous logo not that it's too much different but uh i liked the one that had uh the tombs of the blind dead guys on the side anyway uh yeah awesome album uh i would be shocked uh if this says anything if this didn't end up in my top 10 by the end of the year uh, i love this band so maybe i'm slightly biased but uh this album is just stompy as fuck check it out uh hooded menace Aserium silhouettes unhallowed all right next up uh a band that I kind of had taken a, a, a long break on, I would say. Uh, and, you know, just randomly came across their, they having the, the fact that they were having a new album coming out. And thought, what the hell, let's check it out. And that is, uh, this is Loudness. This is a Japanese heavy metal band uh, originating in the 80s. Uh, you know, uh, some of my favorite uh, heavy metal releases ever by them, uh, particularly... Uh, Thunder in the East is an amazing, amazing album. Uh, those first, I don't know, four or five albums are all just top-notch, awesome heavy metal. Uh, this is their first full-length album since 2014 with something like The Sun Will Rise Again. I didn't listen to that one, so I couldn't tell anything about it. Uh, pretty much we got the classic lineup for this album. So Akira Takasaki on guitar, who has been in the band the whole time. And then we got uh, Minoru, Minoru, uh, Minoru, um, uh, Nahara uh, on vocals, and Masayoshi uh, Yamashita on bass. Uh, those two guys uh, were in the band in the 80s. They both kind of weren't in the band in the 90s and then came back in the, in the aughts. And then they have a new drummer who I don't know the name of, who is like super tall compared to the rest of the band. Let's see if I can find that picture. Uh, is this where I saw the, that picture? Oh, maybe it's... Oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, I don't know his name. He started in, like, 2009 or something. Anyway, uh, let's get into this music. Uh, I would say my, my immediate reaction is disappointment because it doesn't uh, live up to those top-quality 80s releases. Um, but, you know, these guys are in their 50s. They've written countless guitar riffs and solos over the years, and you know maybe uh, they're gonna not write the stuff that's at their peak. But uh, you know, there's some there's some cool songs in here. Uh, Soul on Fire is a great one. Uh, Massive Tornado is another great one, which I heard was originally what was gonna be the name of the album. Uh, this the the self the title track Rise to Glory is a good one. No Limits. So you know, there's a handful of songs in here that I that I enjoy. Uh, you know, it's a whole album. Eh, I'm kind of out on it. I don't know if I showed this. It's mostly just lyrics and band photos on the inside. But you know, there's a handful of songs I like. But you know, e even then, you know, not, not definitely not my favorite loudness tracks. Uh, no solos that really uh, at this point stand out to me, which is kind of disappointing. But uh, you know, kind of cool to uh, you know. It's, like I said, it's been a while since I've really checked this band out. You know, since I don't know, I listened to. I kind of listened up to like the the early '90s material when the when those two guys kind of were out of it, uh, Nahara and uh, Yamashita, and uh, you know, so it's kind of cool to come back and check in with this uh, with this band, even if you know the end result isn't super super uh, positive. You know, just kind of decent, blah. Uh, also, I didn't know this, but it comes with uh, a bonus disc, which is a uh, some Sara Flight, which is an album they put out, uh, I think, two, three, two years ago in 2016, which is just uh, re-recorded songs 
uh, over their discography, which uh, you know would have been cool. But you know, for the most part, I don't know like any of these songs, and I don't know they wasn't enjoyable to, to hear for me. I, I only listened to, like half of it, so I could be wrong. Uh, this is out on ear music, which I didn't. Uh, I'm not aware of. But yeah, uh, maybe hopefully it'll uh, grow on me a little bit more. But you know, as of now, meh. But uh, kind of cool or whatever. Anyway, uh, loudness, uh, rise to glory. Uh, okay, final release from this year. This one's this one's pretty cool. Um, this is a Dungeon Synth project out of Canada. Uh, <laughs> For now, I'll show it like this. It is uh, comes in this cool uh, burlap packaging. Uh, this is Arcane Cavern, and uh, yeah, let me just uh, let me get this out of here for you. This album's called Sorcery of Chaos. This is released on Malum Arcana, a new label out of Canada, which I love. I will be following them devoutly. Here's the the cassette. I I don't know if it's a recent trend or not, but I, I I'm I'm really enjoying. Uh, mostly in black when I'm seeing it, but uh, on this too. But this is, you know, these borders and stuff. I, I'm really enjoying that that, uh, that style. No, it's like this. Yeah. Anyway, like I said, uh, Dungeon Synth. Uh, you know, really cool. Kind of. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, re I really get uh, you know a, a, a Final Fantasy vibe from this. Kind of uh, describes itself. As you know, kind of uh, makes you think of Dungeons and Dragons and Conan the Barbarian and that kind of thing, and you know, I, I definitely agree. Uh, one thing I thought was uh, kind of cool when the when I because I ordered this, it came through. Uh, you, you went to the site, then it directed you to buy it through Bandcamp, and uh, when I got the shipping notice, I got this cool little note that I thought was uh, was fun. Uh, it said, "Sir Travis, your parcel has been prepared by my squire." Once the horses have been fed, the contents shall be delivered to the nearest mail outpost. Sincerely, the Count of Grim Forests. Well, thank you, Count. I appreciated. I appreciated your note. Uh, comes on this uh, white tape with the uh, the sticker. Um, the J card with the song titles. Backside it says uh, all the sorcery and spellcraft were performed by the Chaos Mage. So I'm not really sure who the Chaos Mage is versus the Count of the Grim Forests. Maybe the Count of the Grim Forests is the uh, the guy running Malamarcana. But uh, and I thought that was cool. That's a little picture of probably our Chaos Mage there. Limit. I didn't know at the time. I knew it was limited, but I know what it was too. But it's out of 20. I got number four, which is cool because it's the same number I got for this right here, the Gertrude Blalu. So yeah, that's cool. Got four, four out of 20 both times, which is an awesome number to get. Um, so yeah, this is by the way, this is batch one of three. So if you are interested, I'll leave a link, obviously, as I always do. Uh, if you're interested in picking up a physical copy of this, I'll leave a link. You can check out the music. And uh, at some point, batch two and three will come out and you can try to get snagged your own. So anyway, this is cool stuff. I really like it. Um, I uh, particularly enjoyed uh, the, int the, um, the inclusion of sound effects like uh, the, the ho it's galloping horses and swords clanging and stuff. Uh, one extra thing that also is super amazing that uh, it comes with this uh, storybook which is uh, awesome. That's literally uh, literally a story. Flip through quickly here. But yeah, here, uh, this is the prologue. I read through this earlier along while listening to the music. It does a pretty good job of uh, kind of going along with, uh, you know, going, you know, based on the song titles and stuff. Uh, I might be wrong, but based on my reading, uh, I kind of get the impression that this story is only for half of the album maybe I'm I could be wrong for sure but uh that's kind of my reading of it it did say that this was chapter one of uh what did they say it was called I can't remember now uh 
the source the sorcery of chaos maybe maybe that's the name of the album uh that is the name of the album but uh it, it was chapter one or something i can't remember now what the title is but so maybe i'm right and that's uh, that'll be continued on somewhere else not totally sure but uh regardless uh this was fun to kind of read through it was a really awesome cool touch that i appreciated and uh yeah super cool so yeah uh awesome uh arcane cavern uh, Sorcery of Chaos, awesome dungeon synth project out of Canada. Uh, definitely uh, check them out and look forward to batches two and three when they are released through Malamarcana. Also, yeah, Malamarcana. I'll leave a link to that too, obviously. Don't pay attention to these too much because I'm sure it'll be limited and it's hard. Fa I've actually been lucky to get get a lot of uh, limited stuff lately, but uh, I'm s soon enough I'll be I'll be failing. Okay, uh, yeah, let's move on to the next stuff. So yeah, th that's awesome. Definitely check that out. Uh, Arcane Cavern, uh, Sorcery of Chaos. Uh, okay. Next up, I did a small order through High Roller Records because uh, as I wanted to pick up. A particular release, and uh, this is the only place I could really find it. Uh, new and for you now, it was pretty much paying the same price as if I were picking up used. So what the hell? And that's the final full length by uh, Jaguar Iron Curtain, uh, speed metal band. I've been totally into lately out of Spain. This is their second of three uh, full length albums. Jaguar Spirit is the name of this one. Out on Dying Victim Productions. Uh, originally was released on. Heavy Force or something like that, but uh, same year, uh, which was 2013, 2013, uh, Dying Victims put out this version. It comes in this slipcase. This is the uh, album art cover. I like the, the blue. There's our guy. This is the, uh, the final full-length album to uh, have, I think it's this guy here, Danny on guitar. Who also is in a band, Hitten, which I will be, you know, I'll be dabbling into their stuff now, as this is the final full length of Iron Curtain that I don't have. Um, and they have a couple EPs and other stuff, which I'll, I'll probably slowly get over time. Uh, but uh, as of right now, I'll be focusing on. I mostly kind of focus on full lengths till I get kind of into that that compulsive obsessive. Uh, time when uh, I want to just get you know discography complete bands. Uh, yeah, this this album is uh, it's awesome. Uh, I still probably would say that I think uh, Road to Hell, which is their first one, uh, is probably my favorite. With my leprosy there, uh, but this one is right up there uh, along with it. I do think uh, I want to say that their third album, uh, which is called Guilty as Charged, is probably my, my least favorite uh, by quite a bit comparatively to these two. Still a, still a fun, cool record, but uh, definitely uh, not as good as these first two for me. Really like this one a lot. Uh, they have a cover, as all their all their al full-length albums do, they have a cover at the end for the song, what was it called? I forgot already. Uh, Set the Stage Alight, which is by a band called... Forgot that too. Give me one moment. I will find the answer for you. Maybe. Maybe it's on the. Yeah, I think it's on here. Uh, by Weapon. You guys probably maybe knew that already. Anyway, uh, awesome stuff. Awesome riffs. Uh, soloing, fantastic. As you know, those the two main things I want out of my my heavy metal and the various associated genres like speed metal uh awesome stuff uh if you're into the stuff definitely check this band out you won't be disappointed i've been loving their material a lot lately and uh yeah i'm sure i'll i'll regret not just immediately going after their eps and all that junk but uh uh you know that you know how it is uh I'm sure, I'm sure when I listen to him, I'll be like, oh, why didn't I pick this up before, idiot? Uh, kind of uh, like uh, this next one that I finally picked up, which is uh, Victim to the Blade uh, by Vulture. This is an awesome speed metal band out of Germany. 
Uh, they released an album last year, The Guillotine, which was, I don't know, I want to guess 22 on my list last year. Uh, this is an EP. I guess it's also sort of considered a demo, although uh, it was originally independently released, I think, and then High Roller Records uh, re-released it. Uh, so yeah, anyway, it's got uh, three tracks, uh, original tracks by the band, and then a, a Judas Priest cover uh, of what is it called Rapid Fire. Doing awesome with my memory today. Uh, so yeah, awesome riffs, awesome uh, soloing, uh, you know, great. I love ah, the the awesome high pitched uh, vocals are cool. Uh, I just want to highlight this particular uh, section of the song. If you can see there, it's a lot of friggin' solos in this song. In fact, these two these two songs each only have two apiece. Only two. But yeah. Anyway. Uh, like the album art. Not sure why I didn't pick this up earlier. What an idiot I am. But uh, yeah, great songs. I really actually like uh, all three of them. Uh, in particular, though, uh, uh, DTD delivered to Di delivered to die, and then the, the, the title track, Victim to the Blade. Both those songs are just outstanding. Uh, solid cover of the Judas Priest track, Rapid Fire. Also, but yeah. Uh, you know, it's obviously they just released an album last year, so it's a little too ridiculous to want more material. But whenever they release it, I'll be uh, I'll be gobbling it up as fast as I possibly can. Vulture, Victim to the Blade, uh, awesome speed metal out of Germany. Check it out. All right, one more to go. Uh, this is a cool little fun release. Uh, this is uh, Road Rash, Thunder in Paradise. This is um, some cool. Um, New wave of British heavy metal uh, inspired uh, speed metal out of Canada. I would, I, I actually kind of would say I feel like there's a, a little bit of a punky flair to this band, uh, particularly I would say mostly in, in the vocal style. Maybe I'm not sure if that's accurate or not, but that's the kind of vibe I get. Regardless, comes in this uh, as they describe it, uh, 45 style slipcase packaging. Uh, you had the option of getting it signed or not. I thought, what the fuck? Why not? So there's the back with the signatures. Uh, I love this album art. Really cool stuff. Uh, they actually have this out on cassette too. And man, I don't know why. I just want to buy it on cassette also. which I So I'll probably end up breaking down and doing that. Because I'm a horrible, horrible person who's addicted to cassettes. Uh, so yeah, it comes in this 45 style. Slipcase style thing. So yeah, here's the CD. And then... Uh, Inside's got lyrics and some info and stuff too. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, Sold stuff, you know. This is these guys aren't world beaters or anything that I'm super super into, but uh, you know, it's 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 some solid uh, solid speed metal. All the songs are uh, uh, car themed. Uh, you know, asphalt assault, burnout, HOV bandit, max RPM, petrol for breakfast. You know, that's that's fun. Uh, wrote with the name Road Rash, uh, in with the car that's specifically on the front. I sort of get they might be referencing the. Like I've been saying, I'm never gonna get one video recorder on in one go. I don't know what the hell's going on. Doesn't matter. Like I was saying, uh, like I was saying, uh, with the band name Road Rash and the uh, specific car being used on the cover. Which, by the way, I don't know if I said awesome album art. Uh, Thinking the guys are kind of referencing the NES game Road Rash, the same name, so that's a little fun for me. So yeah, awesome stuff. I'll leave a Bandcamp link. Pick up either the CD or the cassette if you so choose, or the digital if you want that too. That's a fun choice. Uh, cool, fun stuff. Definitely worth checking out. Road Rash, you know, just uh, just north of me there in uh, BC, Vancouver. I'm, I'm in Washington State, so like I said, just north of me. For all you geography buffs out there. All right, that's all I got for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, if you're familiar with any of those releases, let me know what you think of them. And, uh, yeah. Check out, uh, check out Malum Arcana. But, uh, not as fervent as, uh, fervently as me, because I'm a selfish, selfish bastard. <laughs> all right, that's it. Have a good day.